are you fully committed to God's divine assignment that he has for you? Again, I ask you the question, are you fully committed to the divine assignment that God has for you? Over the past couple of weeks, we have been taking a look at being a vessel of God. Mm -hmm. From those sermons, we know that as a vessel of the Lord, we know that God has a special plan Mm -hmm. and a special purpose for each and every last one of us. We know that as a vessel of God, we know that God will use us for his higher plans and for his higher purposes. We we have seen throughout the Bible that God uses man. In the Old Testament, God used man to teach He used man to also prophecy as well. And he used man to teach and to prophecy to one another. We have also seen in the New Testament that the Lord still desires to use every last one of us, All all of his children, for that same purpose, for that same reason of ministering to all of those who are around us. All right. In his great commission, we see Jesus say to those that would choose to follow after him, Mm -hmm. he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. So again, I tell you today that it is very clear to us what God's higher plans and what God's higher purpose is for all of us. And his higher plan and his higher purpose for all of us is to minister to and to make believers of not some people, but all people. Now, how the Lord uses us Mm -hmm. to carry out his divine assignment, I tell you today, it is unique to us. And what I mean by this is that it is personalized. It is special to each of his children. Again, I tell you, he uses some of us to preach to one another. Again, I tell you that the Lord uses some of us to sing to one another so that we may uplift Mm -hmm. the spirits of each other. Some the Lord may use to testify of their journey and others he may use in the work of charity. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you today that God uses us as he sees fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you that there are times when some of us have reservations. All right, yeah. I tell you today that there are times when some of us have concerns as to how God is using us. Some of us have reservations as to how we are being used by the Lord. Some of us, we, we question right. how God is going to use us. We, we question the Lord's motive. Yeah. And so when we begin to question God, when we begin to question his motive, I tell you today, we begin to question God's divine assignment yes. that he has for us. Mm-hmm. What I want to do here today is I want to look at these reservations that some of us have. All right. I want to look at these reservations that some of us, his vessels, we are supposed to be his vessels. Yeah. I want to look at these reservations that some of us have. And I, and I again, want to ask the question today, right. are you fully committed to the divine assignment yeah. that God has for you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see, I ask this question today because I truly wonder whether or not we are fully committed to being a vessel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Scripture is filled with people who had reservations about the divine assignment the Lord had for them. Right. Last week, I briefly mentioned Peter in my sermon. Yes. And I tell you, you know how much I love Peter. I, I have never hidden that I love Peter a great deal. All right. And I tell you, I felt compelled to preach a sermon focusing in on him this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, Peter was one of Jesus's 12 closest followers. Yeah. Of Peter, Jesus said that he was a rock. That's right. And Jesus said on him, he would build his church. Yeah, yeah. I mentioned that because I want you to understand today that, that Peter was a vessel. Yeah. I mentioned that today because I want you to understand that God had a special plan. Mm -hmm. God had a special purpose yeah. for Peter. Milo. Now, through studying scripture during the years that Jesus ministered, yeah. And even after his resurrection, we see that Peter has some very serious flaws. All right. And this is why I love Peter so much, because all of us have flaws. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there is a faithful man in scripture whose flaws and, fla and failures are put on display as much as Peter's. Mm -hmm. Which honestly is very interesting because typically scripture tries to show the apostles in, in very good light. All right. All right. So what I want to do here today is I want to look at some of these failures that, that Peter had. Yeah. I want to take a, a look at a few examples here of Peter's flaws for, for just a moment here. Mm -hmm. In scripture, we find that scripture shows us that Peter was a bold that he was a brash yeah. and that he was a very impulsive man. Mm -hmm. With little hesitation, we are shown in, in scripture that Peter brashly and impulsively cut off the ear of the high priest's servant in the garden yeah. prior to Jesus being arrested. All right. At another occasion, we are shown in scripture that at the transfiguration of mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. Peter, without realizing what he was saying, right. this is what scripture says, yeah. he impulsively asked to build three tabernacles to Jesus, yeah. to Moses, mm -hmm. and to Elijah. Yeah. Again, I tell you, Peter was very impulsive, very bold, mm -hmm. very brash. Yeah. Some of us may not think that there was anything wrong with what Peter did in either of those occasions. All right. On another occasion, at the Feast of Passover, yeah. the disciples, Scripture tells us, argued among themselves as to who was greater. Now, Scripture doesn't say who led the argument, all right. but I always tell you all that I believe Peter was the one that led the argument. Yeah. I believe this because Peter, again, was bold. Yeah. He was brash. Mm -hmm. He was impulsive. Peter, he had a very big ego, yeah. and, and I believe that Peter thought himself to be greatest among the disciples. Now, actually, it was at this feast, I've mentioned a, a few of his flaws here, but at this feast, mm -hmm. we see another character flaw of Peter rear his ugly head. All right. And this flaw, I tell you today, it is an extremely dangerous flaw mm -hmm. that I feel we must focus on here today. Yeah. Sure. Now, to teach the apostles a lesson on, on what those who consider themselves to be great should do for all of those who are around them, mm -hmm. Jesus, he stood up yeah. and he chose to wash the apostles' feet. That's right. From this is a, a lesson on humility. Mm -hmm. But I tell you today that it is also a lesson on serving those who are around us. All right, all right. We are told here in scripture that when Peter saw what Jesus was doing, yes. when, when he saw Jesus begin to approach him mm -hmm. to wash his feet, 
We are told that Peter initially did not understand what Jesus was doing in that moment. Yeah. And so scripture tells us that Peter rebuked Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are told in scripture that Peter told Jesus, not so Lord. My Lord. Yeah. Now, Peter, he eventually revent, relented from his rebuke when Jesus told him the purpose, mm -hmm. when Jesus told him his reasoning behind washing his feet. Now, at that occasion, I tell you that that was not the first time that Peter offered this sort of rebuke to Christ and to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Prior to his crucifixion, mm -hmm. Jesus had been predicting his death. Yeah. He had been predicting, he had been foretelling his death to the disciples. Mm -hmm. And this was something, I tell you, it frustrated Peter. All right. And on one occasion where Jesus had been predicting his death, Peter, he, in his thoughts and in his feelings, was moved to take Jesus to the side. All right. And when he took Jesus to the side again, we see that Peter, he offered a rebuke yeah. to Christ. And since Christ is God in the flesh, uh -huh. he offered a rebuke to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. This rebuke, it led to Jesus responding to Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me for you are not mindful of the things of God, All right. but the things of men. Yeah, yeah. With all of that being said, I want to direct your attention back to my scripture for mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. here in the book of Acts. Yeah. Now by this point in time in the book of Acts, Jesus had been crucified, Jesus rose from the grave, yeah. and we say with all power in his hand. Mm -hmm. By this point in time, Jesus had ascended to heaven. Yeah. And so by this point in time, Peter had matured just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Peter has had some time to grow as a person mm -hmm. and to grow in his spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yet here in the 10th chapter of Acts, we see that that character flaw shows up again. All right. We are told here in the 10th chapter of Acts in the 9th and the 10th verse, we are told that while he was on the rooftop of Simon the Tanner, we are told that Peter ended up in a deep trance. Yes, yes. And while he was in this trance, we are told that Peter saw a great sheet descend from heaven to him. And we're told that on that sheet, all right. he saw all kinds of animals. Yes. And we are then told that while he saw this great sheet descend from heaven, we are told that he heard a voice and if your Bible is like my Bible, the voice that you see there, those letters are red, mm -hmm. indicating that this was Christ, that this was the Lord speaking to him. And we see the voice say to him there, says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand something here today. That was a direct command from God. Mm -hmm. God was giving Peter a direction. Mm -hmm. Peter, as a vessel of the Lord, he should have been fully committed to carrying out this direction from God, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we see it say there in the 14th verse, we see that Peter rebukes God again. 
He said to God, he said to this voice, which was the Lord's, right. he knew it was the Lord's mm -hmm. because we see him say, not so Lord. Yeah. So Peter understood very well who was giving him direction. Mm -hmm. Peter understood very well who it was that was giving him command here. Yeah. Yeah. But Peter says there in that verse, in response to the command, in response to the direction, Peter says, not so, Lord. Yeah, yeah. We are told in the sixth verse, mm -hmm. we're told that this played out three times. Mm -hmm. This played out three times. That is what scripture tells us. So what was the deal with Peter? What, what was going on with Peter? Why do we keep seeing these examples of Peter rebuking the Lord over and over and over again? And again, he is supposed to be a vessel of God. So what was the deal with Peter? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what the deal was with Peter here. Mm -hmm. Peter, he could not move beyond his thoughts. He could not move beyond his feelings. Mm -hmm. In other words, what I want you to understand here today is that Peter was very stubborn. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter, he was a very stubborn man. We are in the 10th chapter of Acts. 10th chapter of Acts. Mm I tell you, this was a very great flaw that Peter had. All right. He was meant to be fully committed to God, yet we see that Peter continued to have reservations mm -hmm. as to what God was doing, as to how the Lord was moving. Yeah, yeah. In a way, Peter's stubbornness was causing him to question the motives of the Lord. Wow. where Peter should have been mindful of the things of God as, as shown to us when he rebuked Jesus, when Jesus was predicting his death, mm -hmm. we see that Peter was too stuck on himself. Mm -hmm. He was too stuck on his own personal feelings. Mm -hmm. He was too stuck on his own personal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, as a vessel of God, the ideal response from Peter, from that command and that direction would have been what? It would have been to actually carry out. It would have been actually to do as God had commanded him to do. Amen. With no reservations, yes. with no hesitation, mm -hmm. with no delay. All right tell you today that as a vessel of the Lord, as a vessel of God, mm -hmm. the ideal response from the believer, the one that has professed to genuinely believe in the Lord, the ideal response from the believer when God gives us direction, mm -hmm. when God gives us a command, is to do as he commands. Mm -hmm. It is to do as the Lord says. Mm -hmm. Something we must understand when it comes to God's divine assignment for us is this. God is going to move us yeah. wherever and whenever he sees fit. Mm -hmm. He is going to use us as he desires right. and as he pleases. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to trust in how God is going to use us. Yeah. We have to learn how to trust in how God is going to use each and every one. We have to trust in how God is going to move us today. And we must learn to do this without reservation, without hesitation, and without delay. I tell you today that we are certainly going to have times when we are able to do the things that we desire. Yeah. Yeah. Yet at the same time, when God gives us a task, mm -hmm. 
When God comes to us with direction, I tell you today that we should drop what we are doing and we should put his divine assignment first. We should be putting God first in our lives. How many of us are putting the Lord first in our lives today? See, if we say we desire to be a vessel of the Lord, we should be fully committed to him. Not only should we be fully committed to him, we should be fully committed to his divine assignment. Yeah. I feel like many of us, we share a lot in common with Peter today. Mm -hmm. All right. We are very bold. <laughs> we are very brash. Yeah. We are very impulsive. Mm -hmm. God can direct us to wait while he works on our blessing. Mm -hmm. And do you know what we'll do? Mm -hmm. We'll have times when we ignore his command All right. and we'll act on our own impulse. All right. All right. God can direct us to move as he desires and as he sees fit. Mm -hmm. And some of us are actually bold enough to question the Lord's direction. Mm -hmm. Some of us, in fact, will flat out rebuke the Lord's direction because we feel we know a better way mm -hmm. for God to use us. We feel that we know a, a better way of being in service to him. How God is using us does not fit our feelings. It does not fit our thoughts because we believe we know better yeah. than the Lord. Well. When we do this, I want you to understand that we are saying our thoughts are higher, mm -hmm. that our thoughts are better than the makers, yeah. the one who created us. Mm -hmm. Last week I said there is a great sin that today's Christian commit. All right. And last week I said that sin was the sin of laziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell you this week, there's another great sin that today's Christian commits. Mm -hmm. There is another sin that is present within today's Christian, and that sin is the sin of stubbornness. Yeah, yeah. It is the sin of stubbornness. Do you hear me here today? Mm -hmm. When we stay attached to our own thoughts, when we stay attached to our own feelings and we put those thoughts and those, those feelings over God, when we are not mindful of the Lord, we are showing ourselves to be stubborn. Yes. We're not only showing ourselves to be stubborn, we are showing ourselves not to be fully committed to the Lord, not to be fully committed to his divine assignment. We are showing ourselves to believe that we have our own assignment yes. instead of living up to the assignment that we have said that we are committed to. All right. mm -hmm. wow. When God has a divine assignment for us and we choose to rebuke it mm -hmm. because it does not fit our feelings, it does not fit our thoughts. All right. I tell you today that we're not being fully committed to the Lord. Well. We're not being fully committed to his plans mm -hmm. as we so have professed. Well. I want to direct your attention to the first book of Samuel. First mm -hmm. Samuel here for a moment. Mm -hmm. There's some verses there that I want to, I want you to see with your own eyes there in the 15th chapter of first Samuel, the 22nd and the 23rd verse. When you get there, you will read of, of King Saul's great sin. And we had this in a Sunday school lesson mm -hmm. last year. Saul, he committed a, a great sin. Mm -hmm. And when Samuel approached him, mm -hmm. Saul, he did not repent of the sin that he had committed. Mm -hmm. well. And so Samuel, he said to Saul, and I want you to hear every last word of this. He said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? That's right. Mm -hmm. Samuel said, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. Underline that in your Bible. He said, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than worship, in other words. Yeah, yeah. 
said, and to heed than the fat of rams, mm -hmm. for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And then underline this part there, he said, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Mm -hmm. Highlight that in your Bible. Mm -hmm. Draw attention to it. Yeah. You see, Samuel indicates here that spiritual stubbornness right. is indeed a sin. Yeah. It is an action that does not please the Lord. Mm -hmm. As we continue on there, we'll see Samuel finish up by saying, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you right. from being king. Mm -hmm. That was a punishment for his stubbornness. Mm -hmm. When we reject the Lord in our spirit, we certainly know that those who do this are yeah. sinners. Yeah. And we know that sinners cannot enter into his heavenly kingdom. Well, Yet, I also want to point out here to you today that in our spiritual stubbornness, the one who has professed to be a genuine believer, to be a true worshiper of Christ, we find that our spiritual stubbornness mm -hmm. can be a detriment to us. Yeah, yeah. It can not only be a detriment to us, but it, it can also be a, a detriment to all of those who are around us as well. Well, Again, I tell all of you that the Lord has a divine assignment for us. Yeah. And it is an assignment that is going to take us in a direction that we could have never imagined. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I tell you today that the Lord's divine assignment that he may have for us it may cause us to go through some things that we may have never imagined that we would go through. Yeah, yeah. I tell you today that God may have us speak to, God may have us minister to people that we may have never imagined that we would speak to, that we would minister to as well. Yeah. But I also tell you this today, that we can't have reservations about who God sends us to. Yeah. We can't have reservations about what we go through. We must trust in the Lord. Okay. We cannot be a detriment to the Lord yeah. and to all of those who are around us because of our own personal thoughts and because of our own personal feelings. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That kind of stubbornness is mm -hmm. a sin. Well, We certainly should not do this if we have said in our hearts that we desire to be a vessel of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I asked the question, do you desire to be a vessel of God? A couple of Sundays ago, we all said yes. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine that all of God's children will respond with that same answer of yes. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand here today that when we have said that we desire to be a vessel of God, we have made a commitment in our hearts. Yeah. We have taken a vow we have taken a vow to God in our hearts. Oh, yeah. Making a vow to the Lord, I want you to understand it is very important. Mm -hmm. It is very serious as well. Right. I want to now turn your attention to the book of Ecclesiastes here for a moment so that you can understand what I mean about the seriousness of making a vow to the Lord. I want you to turn over to the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes and just mark the fourth through the seventh verse there. When you get there, you see that Solomon wrote, said, when you make a vow to God, Solomon said, do not delay to pay it. He says, for he has no pleasure in fools. Solomon said, pay what you have vowed, better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Mm -hmm. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God that it was an error, that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams and, and many words, there is also vanity, but fear God. Again, Solomon said, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it. Yeah, yeah. 
You see, when we have taken a vow to the Lord, mm -hmm. we ought to stand by that commitment. Yes, yes. We ought not delay. Mm -hmm. God expects us to stand by our commitment yes. because he is committed to us. Mm -hmm. God expects us to stand by the vow that we have taken. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that God desires to use a vessel that is fully committed to him and to his divine assignment today. God is not going to use anybody who is going to half step. Mm -hmm. God is not going to use anybody who is going to half step when it comes to his divine assignment. God wants someone who's going to be all in. Yeah. If you have said that you want to be used for the Lord's special plans, if you have said that you want to be used for the Lord's special purposes, I tell you today that you must be all in and not one foot in. Not one foot in, not one foot out. Both feet should be in. Yes, yes, yes. I tell you today that it is commitment check time. Mm -hmm. It is time for a commitment check. For all of those who have said that they desire to be a vessel of the Lord, it is time for a commitment check. Well, I believe that all of God's children desire to be a vessel of his. So I tell you today that it is commitment check time for all of his children. Yes. Yeah. All of those who are true worshipers, mm -hmm. all of those who are genuine believers of his. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to quickly turn back to the 10th chapter of Acts here. I, I want to turn your attention back to Peter here for just a moment, mm -hmm. because Peter will see that he underwent a commitment check there in the 10th chapter of Acts. Now, we are told in Scripture that while he contemplated the vision that he saw in his trance, we'll see there that a commitment check came knocking on the door for Peter, literally. Scripture tells us there that three men from Cornelius, who was a Gentile that served uh, in the Italian regiment as a centurion, we're told that three of his men arrived at Simon the Tanner's house. And we're told that they were there because an angel of God told Cornelius to reach out to Peter about his faith. Cornelius, we'll see in scripture there in the second verse in the 10th chapter, he's described as a devout man. Yes. Not only was he a devout man, but we're told in scripture that he feared the Lord as well. So this was a faithful man. He was the, the first of many Gentiles who would become a genuine follower of Christ. Now I want you to understand that this was one of Peter's divine assignments. Cornelius was one of Peter's divine assignments. Peter was called to minister to Cornelius. And through Cornelius, Peter was called to therefore minister to all people, all other Gentiles, meaning all other nations of people who are not of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that this was a divine assignment because we'll see there in scripture that the spirit said to Peter while he was on the rooftop there in the 20th verse, the spirit said, go down and go with them. And the spirit said, doubt nothing. All right. For I, the spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit have sent them. So God sent them to Peter. This again, I tell you, was a divine assignment from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. So now is not the time for Peter to have any reservations. All right. All right. Now was not the time for Peter to, to hesitate. Mm -hmm. Now was not the time for Peter to delay. Now was not the time for Peter to rebuke the Lord. All right. 
Now is not the time for Peter to, to complain about or to think about how God was using him. Now was not the time for Peter to be stuck in his feelings, stuck in his thoughts. Now was not the time for Peter to be stubborn. All right. All right. It was time for Peter to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're shown there in scripture that when Peter arrived at Cornelius' residence, he found that not only was Cornelius present, but that all of Cornelius' relatives and close friends, they were all there as well. You see that in the 24th verse. Then we'll see in the 28th verse that when Peter entered into the residence, that he initially remarked you know how unlawful it is for a Jewish man to keep company with or go to one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man coming or unclean. He continued and he said there, but God has shown me that I should not call any man coming or clean. Therefore, I came without objection mm -hmm. is what Peter said. He said that he went to them without objection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finally, we see Peter not hesitate. Finally, we see Peter not have reservations. Finally, we see Peter not delay. Finally, we see Peter not offer a rebuke. Peter said that he went without objection. Yeah. He said, therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How often are you moving today without objection when God is using you as his vessel? Mm -hmm. The check here for Peter was to see if he had learned his lesson. Mm -hmm. A lesson, I believe was more about being obedient. Yeah. A lesson I believe was about being fully committed to following the Lord's command. Peter could have chosen to rebuke the spirit. Yes. He could have chosen to have his reservations. He could have chose to, to hesitate, to delay. Mm -hmm. He could have done all these things. He could have chosen not to go on to Cornelius. Mm -hmm. But we see Peter ultimately had learned his lesson. I began to wonder today, are we going to learn this lesson as well? Are we going to learn to put aside our stubbornness today? We see that he committed himself to the task and, he, and that he was now mindful that God was at work on his higher plans, that God was at work on his higher purpose for him. Peter recognized that he was meant for something far higher that it was meant for something that was special, mm -hmm. that was more special than his own dreams, than his own desires, than his own thoughts, and then and his own feelings. I told you a couple Sundays ago that there is nothing better than the calling of the Lord. There is nothing higher than the design assignment that God has for you. Yeah, yeah. We're told that on that day that the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who Peter had ministered to. Mm -hmm. See, again, I tell you, we are meant for something far higher than even our own dreams. Mm -hmm. And I believe all of us have really good dreams, yeah, yeah. really good desires, mm -hmm. but we are meant for something special. Again, we, we, we have said that we desire to be a vessel of the Lord. We say that we are a child of God. We say that we genuinely believe that we are true worshipers of Christ. Then we must believe that we are meant for something special. Amen. We, we must get beyond ourselves. We must think bigger. We must be mindful of the Lord. We have to sometimes put aside our own thoughts and our feelings when God comes to us with that divine plan, with that divine assignment that he has tasked us to do. The thought never leaves my mind on what happens when we, in our own stubbornness, yeah. 
become a detriment to God's plans. Mm -hmm. The thought never leaves my mind on what happens when we become not only a detriment to his plans, we know that his plans are for those who are around us for us to minister to them. Yes, yes. So my, 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 my thoughts began to make me wonder what happens when we become a detriment spiritually mm -hmm. to all those who are around us. Mm -hmm. The only thing stubbornness does is it holds us back. And in our spiritual stubbornness, it also holds back all of those who are around us. Yeah. It begins to hold back the heavenly kingdom. It begins to hold them back from growing spiritually as well. As genuine believers, we have to be mindful and also be able to acknowledge when we are being stubborn in our spirit. Yeah. And we have to be able to also be mindful and be able to acknowledge we are, when we are being a spiritual detriment to those who are around us because we do not want, the genuine believer ought not want to hold anybody back mm -hmm. from the gates of heaven. Mm -hmm. To be stubborn spiritually is as detrimental as it is to be lazy spiritually. Yeah. 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 When you are lazy spiritually, you are unable to move. Mm -hmm. When you are stubborn spiritually, you refuse to move. Mm -hmm. And when you are not moving on the Lord's behalf, you are not only holding yourself back again, you are holding back all of those who are around you. Mm -hmm. So being lazy spiritually and being stubborn spiritually, it has the same end results. It helps nobody. Mm -hmm. If we have made our vow to be in service of the Lord today, I tell you today, let us truly submit our will for God's will. And let us fully commit ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. And let us fully commit ourselves to carrying out the divine assignment that he has for us today. Amen. 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 Amen.